a day trading mistake. Hi, it's Charlie giving you today's video. So I had a message come through on uh, YouTube uh, just a week ago um, where a trader had been in a position prior to uh, CPI, uh, the US inflation report. So I've just got the euro dollar up here. I don't know what position, what market he was trading. doesn't matter. Um, the bottom line was that he said that he was in a trade prior to the news and he had a stop loss, um, but let's just say um, his stop loss was here. And he said that he took three times slippage on his stop. Well, that's not really surprising. Um, if you day trade um, and have a intraday stop loss, which is fairly, in relative terms, tight to the market, tight to where the price is, prior to the news, then although you may have a stop loss in place, um, you're highly likely going to suffer slippage on that stop loss. So, um, to, because the market moves so fast, you're not going to get filled at, at your stop loss level. And so then instead of losing whatever you're going to lose on your stop loss, you, you, the risk is you, lost two, you lose two times or in this instance, even three times that. So my general advice, if you're a day trader, um, and you're in positions, you could be in a position from the morning, um, earlier in the day, and you've got, and maybe you've still got a stop down here, and price going into the news event is significantly higher. Well, you know, by the time price gets down to here, you're less likely to have so much slippage. So it is relative to where your, you know, your stop is. But if you're going into a high um, news event, such as inflation or uh, non-farm payrolls, some of the biggies, then in the main, you're better off cutting your positions ahead of the news um, because if it goes against you, you could end up taking significantly um, um, more slippage, which ultimately affects your overall performance because yes, it could have gone in your favor as well, but most likely you're going to bank your profits and not hold on for too long. You'll just jump out as soon as you're in a bit of profit. Um, and over the long run, it's probably going to cost you more than it's not. So you're better off waiting, as a, and as an intraday trader, waiting for news to come out and then trading post news, not trying to put positions in before the news. Now, I know that people will say, well, yeah, but could you not put, you know, a buy order in, you know, above, so put a buy, oops, um, uh, a buy stop in up here and a sell stop down here and you know whichever way the market breaks it'll trigger you in no <laughs> because the markets don't always just break and go like in this situation like in this example from a week ago quite often they'll break one way and then go the other so you'll get if i can get my pen to work you'll get triggered in up here for example on your buy stop so it, it breaks that way then it slams down so you get stopped out of your buy stop and then you get triggered into the cell and quite often it'll end up coming back up as well and ends up going oh you know every way but loose so I don't think that's the right way of trading again I've seen people try to trade that way and then end up uh, chucking that one in the bin because they've realized that yeah sometimes of course that's going to work for you but you do it for long enough and there's going to be plenty that don't and it's just not really giving you an edge. So the the best way to approach major news events is let the news come out, let the news break uh, or whatever the, the reaction is to the news. And then you can then start to um, ascertain where you want where you want to be trading, because sometimes an actual fact, um, uh, a news event is uh, worthwhile fading, of course, as well, if the news itself is uh, mixed. So quite quite often, not always, uh, when you get those uh, mixed moves, it's because you get a headline news number which comes out in one way, which shoves the market down. But some of the component parts of the report are suggesting something else. So for example, a good example of that, let's take something like non-farm payrolls. So let's take non-farm payrolls. And let's say the forecast is for 200,000 jobs over that month to have been uh, created. And let's say it's a beat. So uh, actually comes out at, for argument's sake, 250,000. Okay. So you get 250,000 jobs created. Um, 
but then there are other components within the report so for example um, uh, average hourly earnings um, are expected to grow at in this particular report I'm making this up by the way uh, let's say 0.4 of a percent um, but they actually come in at let's say 0.2 of a percent I'm, I'm completely making this up this is the sort of thing that can happen and does happen so the headline number could be dollar positive let's say in this so using the euro dollar here then an initial reaction could be to the downside as the dollar benefits okay so the euro goes down against the dollar on that bigger initial jobs number but then the component parts within the report one of them being average hourly earnings actually comes out lower which is would be dollar negative so you get a, a slam down and then but in, in this instance it's probably going to be worthwhile fading it at some point because there's probably going to be a move back uh, back to the upside in this sort of in, in, uh, uh, situation so that's just one way of you know using the component parts of the report not just technically but using the fundamentals as well to then read into that if all the component parts of the report come out strong then it's more likely you're going to see follow through so but however way you trade um, the best way is not to be in trades just before or in the you know half hour or so before a particular report because the risk of slippage is great and that can overall affect your performance um, Yes, you might miss out on that big, you will miss out on that bigger move um, post the news, but in the long run, you'll probably be better served. Hopefully that gives you some food for thought for this video this week.